define two term one is called as sensible heating or sensible cooling and other is called as latent heating or latent cooling so sensible is means that if the heat is sensed by thermometer bulb then it is called as sensible heating and latent means that the heat is not noticed by the thermometer so normally in the phase change process whatever the heat is supplied will not be recorded by thermometer that part is called as latent heating let consider here a vessel and we have a water and we have a thermometer so this thermometer water is at initially at 30 degrees celsius and corresponding pressure is p atmospheric and now we will give the heat to this so we can represent this water on ts plot at atmospheric pressure so this one is constant pressure line now recall that at one atmosphere the water will convert into steam at 100 degrees celsius and we have water at 30 degrees celsius which is lower than 100 it means that this is subcool water if you give the heat to this this heat is used to change the temperature of the water it means that the heat is sensed by thermometer hence the name is called as sensible heat so the temperature will rise there will come 40 and finally will attain 100 and then the formation of steam is there so here AB is called as sensible heating and for sensible heating we can calculate Q for constant pressure process as Cp into delta T that is the final temperature minus initial temperature recall that del Q is also equal to du plus P dV and is also given by dH minus Vdp now for constant pressure process dP is 0 hence del Q is same as dH so we have dH is same as Cp into dt then this time you have to take the Cp of water which is normally 4.2 but if you move from B to C and C to D then we have phase change so C to D is a superheated region that is called as superheated steam so same equation is applicable for CD also because for this also we have phase is single so we again write C at dH equal to Cp into dt but this time you have to take the superheated steam here we take the Cp of water is same as Cp dt now in the latent heat Cp can't be defined from B to C so whenever we have phase change temperature is not recorded and therefore the formula for dH equal to Cp dt is not valid so in the case of latent heat your maximum energy is used to break up the bonds and that is why the temperature of the thermometer will not change so that value is to be measured this measured value is called as HFG is called as latent heat of vaporization which is normally available or you can calculate this value using Clausius claprian equation that will introduce you later on now you can observe here as the pressure will decrease HFG will going to increase and at critical pressure this value will be equal to 0 so be careful for using the value of dh equal to cp into dt so you can use this value for sensible only not for latent so whenever we have phase change we have to calculate the value using hg minus hf so at point b we have f property and point c we have g property you have to measure this value or you have to calculate this using clausius claprian equation so this heat is called as latent heat next term is enthalpy of water so when we have a water at point B, how to calculate the enthalpy? That is saturated water. So it is basically defined as the amount of heat. So enthalpy of water is basically defined as the amount of heat absorbed by 1 kg of water in being heated from freezing point 0 to boiling point. So it is given as HF equal to CFW into TSH minus 0 reference. Now since the reference is 0, so HF we can write as simply CPW into T value where you have to take the T as a saturation temperature in degree Celsius so there is no point in writing this we can simply write Cp into T sach and if you take Kelvin then you have to add plus 273 minus of 0 plus 273 so plus 273 and plus 273 get cancelled so remember this equation that HF whenever you have to calculate you have to take the temperature in degree Celsius so HF is simply given by Cpw multiplied by T sach and this TCH must be in degree Celsius because the reference is taken as 0 degree Celsius don't do this calculation and if you wish to take Kelvin then you subtract minus 273 but better practice for degree Celsius that is better idea so I suppose the first calculation is ok that is CPW into TCH where TCH must be in degree Celsius so what is the second equation Normally value of CPW is 4.186 or you can take as 4.2 also for quick calculation. So whenever you have to find out enthalpy at a liquid state, you simply multiply it by temperature. 
half of this value will be cp of vapor of super steam but these are assumed to be constant value if you want to add 70 you simply multiply by 70 4.186 so in this fashion you can calculate kilojoules per kg enthalpy the second term is enthalpy of evaporation so this time this value is represented as hfg then we have enthalpy of dry steam which is normally represented as hg and this value of hg is basically hf plus hfg or we can write hfg is equals to hg minus hf because the property is normally given for hg and hf last term in this series is internal energy now recall that enthalpy is given as u plus pv so you can very well calculate internal energy as h minus pv now here h is normally in kilojoules per kg so there is a slight deviation in ideal gas dh is taken as cp into dt du is taken as cv into dt but these equations are not applicable for steam so these two equations are not applicable for steam be careful only for sensible heat we can apply this so whenever we have only one phase that is water we can very well write dh equal to cp into dt but remember the phase must should not change same we can apply it for steam also for superheated steam superheated vapor we can write dh equal to cp of vapor integral of dt from t soup from t sach to t soup so these are the quick calculations you can use and here you are given the table enthalpy for saturated water is given as hf f letter stands for water hf plus xhfg for wet steam then for dry steam you have to use hg hg vg uh, specific volume for wet is given as vf plus xhfg but remember vf in practical sense is very very less than vg and this equation can written as vf plus x into vg minus vf so actually the vf value is very very small and again is subtracted from itself with a fraction x into minus of vf so for quick calculation you can use this value as x into vg but whenever we are given the vf and vg do calculate using the basic formula so for quick calculation the reason is that vf is very very small as compared to vg and we have formula for super steam so as far as possible remember this formula this formula we have derived initially is vg into t sub by t sach in all this calculation always prefer temperature in kelvin except for calculation of hf for all other calculation use kelvin only for hf you write temperature in degree celsius and if you want to write down kelvin then subtract minus 273 all these are calculations are done on thermodynamic equation that is why you must take temperature in kelvin